what's up guys? Today I want to demonstrate the latest features and advancements in MaxiTerm terminal software for the Color Maximite 2. Start out by running the basic program. Now note that this program in its current state can support the two standard COM ports of the Color Maximite and we are working on developing uh, support for the COM3 which is the COM port normally used by the power supply connection. So right now I'll just use COM1 and I'm going to use 115.200 as the speed for the modem I have set up right now. I can just hit enter. Now right now you have three choices of default uh, font color and I'm going to go with white right now so we can see some modem initialization strings. Uh, right now the main initialization string, the second one there, is hard-coded, but I am working on support for being able to change that to suit the modem you're using at the time. So as you can see, I can send AT commands to the modem. And we'll go ahead and display a different font color right now. You can do that by hitting Alt-F. This is really just letting you uh, change the font setting uh, from this point forward. It doesn't remember this setting so we'll try amber for the moment. I know there's some people who love amber out there. And we can also choose green. And whatever font color you choose, all of the program screens will then be in that color. So I'm going to go ahead and return to white for the moment. Alright, so first I would like to demonstrate some of the various help screens and other features of the program. So to begin with, Alt-H will bring up the help screen showing you all the commands in the current version of the program. So let's start with uh, Alt-B, which allows you to change the COM port settings. So this is really just allowing you to change um, from whatever you chose when you initially started the program. Um, I can switch to COM2. Uh, the modem module that I've developed for this system actually has a switch on it allowing me to change between COM1 and COM2, so I'll switch to COM2 now, and you can see the modems are responding there. I can go ahead and switch back to COM1. I'll switch back to COM1, and we're back in business there. And the speeds are also changeable after you've started the program, although I'm sure you'll want to stick with the default speed unless you need to change. So going back to the help menu, we have a command so you can clear the screen contents, Alt-C. Now the next command for listing the local directory, um, this is especially handy if you're going to download files or upload files and you want to know what's on the SD card before you do that. So Alt-D will bring up a little routine to where you can see the files on your uh, SD card. You can just hit enter or escape to exit that. Next up, local uh, echoing of characters. So like right now I have my modem set to echo the characters and commands I send to it. So this text you see on screen is really me typing it going through the modem and then coming back. If I disable that with ATE0, now I can type commands to the modem, but as you can see, it's not actually showing what I'm typing. We do have a local echo mode with Alt-E. So if you turn that on, then you can once again see what you're typing out the serial port. So if you have a device on the other end of the serial port that doesn't echo what you sent to it, Alt-E will enable local echo. So you can once again have that functionality and see what you're doing. So next up, if you need to reinitialize the modem for any reason, you can hit Alt-I. That will send the uh, commands that it sent when you started the program. Now here we see uh, we've initialized the modem which reset it back to echo mode but because I have local echo turned on that's why you're seeing a doubling of characters I'll go ahead and disable local echo. There we go right back to where we started. Now next up we have Alt P which allows you to see the COM port settings. Now right now you can't actually change anything via this screen. Uh, that's a new feature I'm working on where you'll be able to actually modify these parameters in the future. Uh, for right now the init string and the other settings of the COM port except for the COM port itself and the baud rate everything else is hard-coded in the program at this time but you 
will see some future improvements around that area. So of course Alt Q is the command to exit the terminal. Now if you just want to reset the modem, Alt R will actually send the full uh, reset of ATZ plus your initialization string. But you can do Alt I which is just the initialization string. Now we do have a sound feature. Uh, I don't have the sound connected at this moment so you can't hear it but when the sound is turned on any uh, characters you type will have a little click or beep sound that goes along with it. I tend to find that kind of annoying but there may be some nostalgia in, in that feature. Now Alt X will enable you to disconnect if you're if you're currently connected to a bulletin board system. Um, it, if you hit Alt X it will send the traditional three pluses you know uh, command sequence that will bring your modem into command mode and then it will try to hang up. We can see it through an error because I'm not currently online, but uh, that feature is always there if you need to disconnect and for some reason you're having trouble getting the modem to hang up. Now also on the help menu, uh, we see keys, the page up and page down buttons on the keyboard are for file transfers. Now there's a lot of development work currently underway to add file protocols and different features for file transfers. For right now there's only an X modem transfer protocol built in and you have to have a certain firmware in order to use that. Uh, but I just wanted to show you page up and page down are the keys used. And uh, there is a debug mode that I have planned for the future. Uh, right now it's not enabled and then Alt when V will show the uh, credit screen there. So let's connect to a bulletin board system. So I'm going to go ahead and dial one of my favorite bulletin board systems, which is Bertrauen. You can see the wonderful ASCII art, which hopefully will be even better once we get some ANSI support written into the program. Now that's a feature I'm really hoping for version 2.0. Go ahead and see some login messages. Now if you have a modem or serial connection for your Color Maximite 2 um, and you want to call similar bulletin boards, I'll show you uh, the terminal settings you have to use in Synchronet to get this kind of uh, display you see. If you go into the terminal settings here, tell it no on the automatic terminal detection. Uh, we do not support UTF-8. We're not using ANSI. We're not using Petsky but we do support the extended IBM ASCII character set. Then we hit our backspace key, and there you go. So now I'm going to show you how to do a file transfer. So right now we only have Xmodem support built in. I'm going to show you how to download a file. So we're going to go ahead and hit D. We're going to type in ftp.exe. That's a file I use from this system to test transfers with. Now here you have to choose X modem and not the 1K or CRC version. It's got to be just plain uh, standard original style X modem. So we're going to go ahead and hit X. Uh, we will not hang up after transfer. Now I'm going to hit the page down key. It's going to ask me for the file name, CFTP.exe. Now this file is about 50 kilobits. Um, it may take a moment to download. Here's video of the Color Maximite downloading via the uh, Wi-Fi modem adapter. So there you go. So the download's complete. I'm going to be rude here and hit Alt X to hang up on the bulletin board. So you can see we're offline. Modem is back in command mode. I'm going to list the directory. And there you go. You can see the file that we just downloaded, ftp.exe. We'll also exit to the command shell. And there you go. So there's our downloaded file. Right now, uploads are not working very well from the program. I still have a lot of debugging to do to determine what the cause of that is. but. That is a feature we'll have in place um, in the near future. And if you want it to upload, you hit page up, 
you select the file you want, hit enter, and then it will attempt to send the file to the remote system. But right now there's a lot of bugs still with the uploading. We're still trying to work out, so don't put a lot of faith in that feature as of yet, but definitely by version 2.0 we should have the transfers all worked out. Eventually this is going to error out and it will drop me back to the terminal. Alright, so skipping ahead, here we have the upload failed because I'm not connected to the bulletin board system right now. But you can see I am back in terminal mode. So that's it for our demonstration today. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy using MaxiTerm. Uh, I'll have a link below in the description of this video where you can download the current version you see here in the video. And happy BBSing. Thanks.